Hi, Sarah Starr speaking here. Today I'm with an amazing person, uh, somebody called Martin Avis. Now I say he's an amazing person because Martin is one of those people who's actually, who actually taught me how to do internet marketing. Very early on um, in my internet marketing career, um, I bumped into Martin um, at an internet marketing conference, one of those sort of live events you go to where there's training and also a bit of selling. And uh, Martin was there explaining exactly how Martin makes a full-time income purely through newsletters. And I have to say, I was really, really um, intrigued um, when you did your pitch. So intrigued, actually, that I bought his product. And here's the actual flyer he handed out <laughs> on the day. This was actually the product I bought um, from Martin for, how much was it? 247 pounds, which was about, oh, I'd say about $500 then. Yep, and I bought it and um, I very, very quickly started to make money from it. In fact, the newsletter, um, which you'll probably subscribe to, my newsletter, um, began purely because of Martin. And today, I'm here to talk to Martin to pick his brains because what I want him to teach you today, I'm going to interview him, and he's going to tell us exactly how to build an internet business in, in around three months. So welcome, Martin. Hi. And um, just for the benefit of the camera, I'd just like to quickly just run through how you got started with newsletter marketing and how you kind of stumbled into the industry. I started about uh, 10, 11 years ago, I suppose. I'd been made redundant from my regular job. I worked in advertising for 25 years. I uh, reached the age where a lot of people do, where I suddenly found myself without a job in the advertising industry and no real idea what I wanted to do after that. And I'd heard about internet marketing and of everything that I'd read and heard about it, people were always saying the money's in the list. And I thought, well, that makes an awful lot of sense. And coming from an advertising and a marketing background, I, I could uh, understand the concepts of having a list of people to talk to and to sell things to, um, because it's an awful lot easier to make sales to people that you already have access to, you already have uh, permission to, to speak to, rather than um, with other types of uh, internet marketing where you're constantly having to find new people mm. to talk to all the time. Um, and so I started out from, that, that was really my idea, I, I'd start, I'd start, I'd start a, sorry about that, it sounds like thunder or something, <laughs> um, I'd start a newsletter. Um, of course I didn't know how to start a newsletter, I didn't really know anything about it and uh, so it was a very long learning process for me and it was um, some, some years before I managed to turn it into a full-time income. So did you kind of go, go through the whole kind of normal process of buying all these information products oh, like most of us do? And, absolutely. And, and none was, of them work and then... I know, was the ultimate yeah. newbie, really. Yeah. Um, I, and, and, I, and I didn't know what I didn't know, so I was constantly buying new things, trying to learn new things. Um, but all the time, I had this idea that I wanted to write a newsletter. So I kept plugging away at that. And my... My first newsletter was called BusyZine. Mm -hmm. It was the most boring thing imaginable. Looking back, when I can bear it, and I look back at some of the early issues, it, it lasted for 72 issues, so it <laughs> lasted for quite a while. Wow, yeah. but, uh, one, a week. one a week or something. One a week, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but goodness knows how I got anybody to read it, because it was deathly dull. And then I, I finally realised, because my skills grew, and I finally realised that I had to change the way I was doing it. It was very long. Uh, busy Zine was like 4,000 words long. I mean, it took me forever to write the thing. Um, and so I thought, well, I'll, I'll swip, s flip it on its head and I'll create a new newsletter called Kickstart, which, as its name implies, is a short, sharp spark, really, yeah. to get people going. It wasn't really about internet marketing in those days. It was about business in general. And... Um, the idea was that it would be 500 words or less, but it would be five times a week. So I was still yeah. giving myself the task of writing lots and mm. lots, but it was more digestible. And that really took off, and that, and that grew three, 4,000 subscribers over time. Um, and it was making money, but it was never making... I couldn't live on it. I was having to do other things as well. Until one day when... Um, a happy accident occurred, really. Um, something happened with one of my children that I wrote about. And up to then, I'd never written about my family, my home, mm -hmm. my, you know, my private life. Uh, it was a strictly business newsletter. Um, but I wrote about 
whatever it was, I can't even remember what it was now, but I wrote about this event with my daughter. And I had more emails from subscribers commenting on that than I think I probably ever had in the newsletter's wow. history. Um, my, my inbox was flooded with people saying, oh yes, that happened to me. And, and I'm, yeah, I'm a bit slow on the uptake sometimes, it's but interesting I, I wasn't then. It's, it's, it's interesting Martin says that because um, I, I did Martin's course, the newsletter course, and um, it kind of always been drilled into me, you know, that, you know, you must build a list, you must build a list, you must build a list. And I, you know, really kind of um, uh, withheld from doing this. I really didn't want to do it because I'm dyslexic. And being mm. dyslexic, I thought I'm the last person who should be having an email list. I can't write emails. I can't do that. It's too difficult. Yes. And I built a list purely because people had told me I should do it. And I'd started doing Martin's course. Um, and um, up until that stage, I'd sent out a few emails, kind of very businessy, like what you're saying. Um, I hadn't really followed your course very well, I have to say. I'd just really done the technical stuff because that's really what I'm good at. Um, and I had maybe a thousand people on my list or 1500, not a huge amount. Um, I really didn't know what to do with them. And uh, one Christmas, um, I actually ended up in hospital um, because I had a huge stone in my gallbladder. Mm. Um, but the hospital had Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> so my partner, he brought uh, my laptop in and I actually dictated an email to him um, saying, you know, I'm in hospital, blah, blah, blah. He, I think he actually took a photograph of me and we put that in the email as well. And um, we found a, a product on ClickBank and we, we promoted this product. And it's the first time I'd ever done email marketing where I'd made sort of more than five or six sales. I actually made about $600 that day. Um, and then I suddenly realized, my God, wow. Mm. What an incredible um, thing this is! What an amazing asset this is! Mm. You know, you build this list once, and you know you can live off it. It's it's an incredible thing to have if you yeah. go into hospital or you, you know you, you, for whatever reason you can't work anymore. Um, you've got this thing to fall back on, and it was from that day onwards that I took email marketing incredibly seriously. And if you think about it, I think you know if if you take all if all the internet marketers that you can think of off the top of your head every big internet marketer, the people who've done million dollar launches, you know, those big names, you know who they are. What is the one thing they all have in common? That's an email list. Mm. Um, and there's a big reason for that. And it's something you should be doing. Now, how, I mean, for most people out there, they'll, they'll know, you know, they get emails from marketers every day promoting this, promoting that. What's different about your list? How, what's, because obviously your approach is slightly different to the average internet marketers. The average internet marketer, they just build this big Very list. Different and send crap out to their list every single day and hopefully some of it will stick to the wall and they'll make some sales. But your, your approach is very different, isn't yeah. it, Martin? I think in general there are probably two types of, of emails that go out. I won't call them newsletters because most of them aren't newsletters in the way that I would describe them. There are either things that are rather technical in, in the sense of, of the way my newsletters used to be when I first started, quite dull and quite boring, um, or they tend to be just uh, ad sheets, really. They're just people sending out a recommendation every day uh, with no real content at all. They're just trying to get you to buy something all the time. Mm, I and, see that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's really, that's the two ways that people know about, about um, email marketing. But when you sort of set your mind to think about what's going on, really, when you receive an email, um, people want to do business with a real person. They don't want to do business with an email. They don't want to do business with someone who's just trying to flog them something over and over again. What they want to do is to form a connection with a person. And, and it's like getting a, a real letter from somebody. Um, and so by accident, by writing about my life, I stumbled upon a formula which allowed me to see that if I give something of myself, if I allow people into my life a little. And it's not um, intrusive, you know, it's quite interesting when I go to, go to uh, seminars or I, I run a, a networking day called the London Lunch um, that Sarah comes mm. to and people come up to me and ask me about things that I've written about in my newsletter. Like about Jim, he was I... recently talking about his gym at the bottom of the garden. And Which everybody... is just down there. Yeah, um, <laughs> and people but... often ask you about that when you're at the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it takes me back a little to, because I forget that I've written about these things, and when people start talking, I think, how did you know that? But, uh, <laughs> yes. but that's what makes the connection with people. It's a bit like and reality TV, isn't it? I mean, I think that's why these reality TV programs... Possibly, and yeah. Things like Big Brother and all that kind of stuff has been so successful because people want to see inside your life a little bit. Yes. Um, yeah, we, we just had to 
uh, stop the tape for a minute because the children in the next door garden were a little loud, but uh, we, hopefully we can continue now. You were saying about the uh, reality TV. Yeah, it, absolutely. It's, it's very similar, it's, isn't it? It, similar it is. Concept. It's, yeah. it's, um, sometimes I think it's more like uh, writing a soap opera than writing a newsletter because um, people sort of follow your life <laughs> in a way, and it's a bit like living your life out loud. But it, it, it works, you know, and, and that was really the turning point for me, the tipping point, as they say, that um, it, it, the day that I started introducing that level of personalization into what I wrote was the day that my income started to really take off. And um, I've never looked back, really. really? And, yeah. and so now my, my, when I train people how to write their own newsletters, um, this is the very first thing that I take them back to and say, forget all of the uh, nonsense, really, that you write about, that you read about writing in a formal sense or writing in business English or having to be very grammatically correct. Um, about the only thing that you have to get right is your spelling because people are very sensitive to misspellings, but they're not particularly sensitive to, to grammar. Mm. Um, it's, it's actually better to write as you speak. So most of us don't speak in, in grammatically perfect English. We'll start sentences with and or because or something, which we're told by our teachers we should never do. Yeah. But when you're writing a newsletter, it's much more like speaking to the person that's sitting next to you than it is sending out a formal written um, document. So bring it back to bring it back to reality. Really keep mm -hmm. it real. Um, okay. So um, out of sort of you know you you're, have you done other things apart from newsletter marketing? Have you you know, have you built like review sites, done ads? Oh gosh, and I've done things? everything. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. And, and would you would you say that you know would you say it's probably if you were starting again now? Um, would you say email marketing would probably be the, the best route to go down for, oh, for, yeah, for a new Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I've done everything and I do do everything. Mm -hmm. uh, well, who knows what everything is. Well, Ask 100 yes, internet yes. marketers what they do and you'll get 200 different, different yeah. uh, projects to work on. But um, I've done lots of different things and I make good money from lots of different things. But the one thing that's consistent through it all is writing my newsletter, which I, I now write twice a week and that brings me in a, a very good full-time income. Everything else I do is, is a bonus, really, to me. It's quite interesting. I think a lot of newbies, they resist doing email marketing because, I, actually, I don't know why most people resist it. I mean, I resisted it because I was dyslexic, but mm. I think a lot of people see these products which are coming out, it's like one, click one button and you'll be a millionaire tomorrow. You've probably seen them. Yeah. And I think the kind of, a lot of the, you know, whereas, I think in 2008, the products were better quality. Um, a lot of ebooks. You had to, if you're going to release a product back then, it had to be good. Whereas now, I think, I mean, would you agree with me? A lot of there's a lot of bad products out there, mm. and a lot of these, I wouldn't say scams, but just like these things that automatically build sites and you'll be making money tomorrow yeah. kind of things. I think there you know, there always were bad products, but I think the last couple of years, I think as the economy's got harder, there mm -hmm. have been more people trying to take advantage of that, and by bringing out shoddy products quickly. Uh, just to try and tap into the the need that people have to make money, and that's that's terribly sad because mm. um, they're they're just being exploitative, really. Um, but there are good products out there. There are still people who are uh, ethical and honest, and yeah. uh, it's a great sh it's, it's a real bitter shame to me that that all internet marketers tend to get tarred with the same brush. Um, that that people who are outside of this business think, oh, it's all scam, it's all, everyone's trying to con you. Whereas those people, the, 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 the bad apples, are such a small percentage. Um, in fact, I was writing about this in my newsletter just um, yesterday, that I think in all my 10 years or so making money online, I've actually come across less than, less than half a dozen people who are, I would say, are real bad apples. Mm. Most people are just genuine honest folk trying to make a living mm. and um, you know that, that that's a internet marketing is a perfectly reasonable way of making a living but for my money if if I were starting again now I would definitely do it with a newsletter but the the answer to your question of why people shy away from newsletters is because people have a fear of writing and mm. it's as simple as that people say whether this whether it's newsletter writing or whether it's article marketing People say, oh, I couldn't do that, I can't write. Whereas 
actually it's really easy if you can if you can have a conversation with a friend you can write that conversation down and it, writing is as easy as that especially if you're not worried about um, the 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 formality of it, um, the way we were taught to write in school. If you're just trying to get an idea across, and I do it with video, don't I? you so, do it with video, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but as you said, you're, you're, when you were in hospital, you dictated it. That's right. Yes. Um, yes. You can do that with somebody else, or you can mm -hmm. do that with something like Dragon Naturally Speaking, mm -hmm. which which will convert what you say into into typed words. Um, so there are ways around it, but it's release yourself from the trap of having to be rigid and formal. Allow yourself to be loose and flowing. And realise that with a newsletter, my newsletters aren't necessarily long articles about things. They're very often short couple of paragraph ideas, really. So if someone's starting from scratch and they want to do this, does it have to be in the internet marketing niche? That's what people often ask me. God, no. No, no okay, no. so. Um, and I'd probably recommend that it wasn't to start okay, with. Yeah. I mean, internet marketing, has a bad reputation because people say it's very hard to break into. If you're not already in it, you're going to find it difficult to get into it. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. No, no, I don't believe the market's that. so big. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can get into it, but there, there's a slight ethical dilemma of should you be telling people how to make money online before you've actually done it yourself? Um, it's actually better to start making money online some other way, as I mm -hmm. did with business, for example, mm -hmm. before you M um, move into the internet marketing field to teach people how you've done it. Yeah, I was making money doing pay per click before I, I met yes. you. Yeah. Um, I was and selling. Video. I was selling um, other products um, from ClickBank yeah. uh, in the. Uh, I think it was the water for gas niche. Go and check that one out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was making about three hundred dollars a day selling products just purely through pay per click. Um, mm. So I already had that background before I started a newsletter. Mm. So you, I mean, I, I you. I mean, what kind of niches? I mean, just just you know, well. Personal development? Almost or, anything. Or, Personal yeah. development is a very good niche because yeah. everyone's interested in self-improvement. Yeah. Um, but whatever your interest is, is, is where you can start. I mean, if you happen to have an interest in dogs, for example, you could write a newsletter about dogs. Uh, if you've got an interest in model railways, you could write a, a newsletter about that. But would there have to be products in that niche that um, you could sell regularly? Yeah, yeah. information yeah. products? Or, but there are... Or, there yeah. are information products or even real products mm -hmm. that you can sell in almost any niche you can think of. Mm. I mean, you'd make less money perhaps, but um, even in some very um, out there niches, you, you will find products on Amazon, for example, that you could recommend in a newsletter. Um, so th there's always something that you can sell. Or make you your own to. products. You, you've had great success doing that, haven't you? Making your own products and selling yeah. them to your list. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that's something... Um, we're always told you're, only, you're going to make real money when you start making your own products, and that's absolutely true. You, you make mm. far more, but it's not something you can do from day one necessarily. No, it's very time-consuming as well. And, yeah. and it's something that you, you really do need to cut your teeth uh, before you start creating information products. But it's not a difficult thing to do, um, but it's just that you need to get to understand how the market and the marketing works, um, because uh, it's very easy to create a product. It's not so easy to sell a product. Mm -hmm. Um, so you've got to understand how the internet marketing works first. But um, in, in terms of starting a newsletter, whatever your, your subject of interest is, it's likely to be possible to create a newsletter in that field. And, and in my, my course, for example, I've had people who are nothing to do with internet marketing creating newsletters using my methods. Mm -hmm. um, one local print company, for example, um, they were asking me how they could increase their business and wanted me to design them a new website. And I said to them, well, actually, you don't need a new website. What you need to do is to get more business from the customers you've already got. And, and mm. that's really the essence of, of what yeah. newsletter yeah. Um, marketing is. And so I showed them how to create their own newsletter, which they sent out once a fortnight. And they managed to get massive increases in business just by taking their really? existing customer list, sending out an email to them. The first email said, you know, we hope you don't mind that we're sending you our new newsletter. If you don't want to receive it, you can unsubscribe. Yeah. Nobody did unsubscribe, but they got lots of people saying, what a good idea. Mm. And in each issue of the newsletter, they were able to say, this week we're doing a special on business oh, cards, or yes, this week yeah. we're doing a special on Christmas cards, or whatever it was they wanted to promote. 
and that generated massive amounts of extra business for them. They, it, it increased their bottom line hugely at an overall cost of about $20, really, mm -hmm. for, for setting up an autoresponder. Now, um, the reason I'm actually doing this, uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this interview today is because I want to pick Martin's brain exactly on how he would, um, if you were starting again today, what he would do in his business, or you know, from a new business standpoint, what he would do to start generating a full-time income. So, I mean, now with the recession that's been, you know, going on for a while now, um, a lot of people are being made redundant, or a lot of people are worried that they might be ma being made redundant. I mean, just before we get into the actual nuts and bolts of exactly how he would do this, um, would you say with the recession, has that affected being able to sell things online? Is it, is it, is it drastically affected things? I mean, what, what's, what's going on there? Is that, I, um, I could only speak for my own business, yeah. and I'm sure your experiences yeah. will be slightly different. But I found that, um, I mean, we're here talking at the end of November 2011. Um, I found that 2010, um, it, the, selling things online slowed down quite a lot. I, I was selling about a third less than I had been before. But you were still making enough money to pay the bills? Oh gosh, I was still making that. a good income, yes, right, but, okay, but, so, it, but yeah. it dipped slightly. Um, 2011, it's come right back up to where it really? was before. That's yeah. interesting. Um, yeah. I think people are being a little bit more selective, and I think the uh, responsibility now lies much more with people like you and I who are recommending products to people to make sure that we recommend the best products that we can find mm. um, and not just recommend I mean God forbid anyone would ever do it I would never do it but if you can't just recommend something just for the sake of making a commission mm. um, because that's not fair people are out there needing to mm. make money from the things that you you recommend so you have to know that the products that you're suggesting people spend their money on are going to work for them or stand a very good chance of working for them mm -hmm. or at the very least are going to be very easy for them to get a refund on if it doesn't work for them. Because let's face it, um, the same product could work brilliantly for you and work not at all for me because your own personality and the way you um, perform in business is a big part of it. It's, it's not just about buying a book and everyone who follows it is going to make money. Um, some people won't make a penny from it, and some people will make loads of money from it. But so long as there's a, a, a clear way that you can ask for a refund if it doesn't work for you, then mm. I think that's, that's fine. But you, know, you have to know that the product has real potential. Okay, so let's take a scenario right now. You, you're in full-time employment, okay, you've got a job, you've got income coming in, and you've been sent a letter today that says you're going to be made redundant in three months' time. Um, can't find another job, you've tried but you can't, you want to do this internet marketing thing and you've got to plan this out over the next three or four months you need to replace your day job. Yeah. You need to be making, let's, let's say, 5,000 US dollars a month or 4,000 US dollars a month, something around that kind of figure. Mm -hmm. um, what, okay, what would be your first step? What would you do? I mean, would you know what niche you... Let's pick a niche as an example, just um, that, that you'd be... Well, okay, let's, I mean, we let's, were talking about personal development. Okay, so um, let's say you went into the personal development niche. Mm. What would be your first steps then in um, this newsletter thing? Uh, my first step would be to sit down and try and write a newsletter. I wouldn't worry about having anybody to send it to. I wouldn't worry about subscribers. I just would want to know in my heart that it was something I could do. So I'd, I'd try and sit down and write a newsletter that would have interested me had I been a subscriber of it. And I might write two or three editions of it. Um, that's when I did start uh, way back. That's exactly what I did. I, I sat in my front room through there and wrote three editions of my first uh, So it needs to be something newsletter. you know a bit about, maybe you're subscribed to other people's newsletters, you've read a few blogs and things, yeah. so it needs to be a subject you can write about. Yes, but, yeah, but it doesn't, about. you don't have to invent um, your, the subject all the time. You haven't got to come up with something new. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure if, if you happen to have an interest in personal development, enough that you want to create a newsletter, you've probably got books on it. You may have read magazines on it. You're probably aware of general buzz going on about mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can bring all that to bear. And there's nothing wrong with perhaps writing a review of a book that you've bought or, or even read in the library. You, know, you yeah. don't have to go and buy things. Um, there's, there's usually lots and lots of things that you can, you can bring in. But you write two or three mm -hmm. um, newsletters just to get a feel for it. 
And then once you feel that you've, you've uh, you can do it, because if you How many words, roughly, would you say? Sort of, what are yours? And I've never actually measured them out in words, but are they sort of... Well, when I, when I started the, the current newsletter, it was about 500 words oh, per issue. Right, yeah. Um, it now can be anything from a thousand to two thousand words because I tend to be a bit wordy, as yes. you may have noticed. <laughs> but um, but it doesn't need to be that. You, you're really looking for. I mean, I would say perhaps three short thoughts that you can you can write a couple of paragraphs on each one, and not big long articles. Just just yep. wetting people's appetites or giving people a tip or something like that. And then within those three, maybe only one of them needs to be about personal development. One of them might be about something you've done in the garden or, you know, in my mm. newsletter, I very often write about films that I've been to see. That's right, yeah, you do movie reviews in your, your newsletter. Well, I wouldn't call you? them reviews. No, but, but I, you say you've been uh, out to film and you uh, say if it's bad or yeah, you say if it's good, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah which I've I, never seen before in any other newsletter. No, you know, and, I'll, yeah. and I'll, if I go to a restaurant, I might talk about that. Mm. Or, you know, just, just general bits and pieces from your life that, that your readers can associate with really so yeah. so yes you're going to bring the the subject of the of the newsletter back to your core subject at some point but you're going to ramble off onto other things and that's sure. what makes you different from the people who are just sending out really really long boring newsletters or just ads ads every um, day yes yeah. yeah you're you're sending a bit of you if mm -hmm. you like people will like that so you 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 kind of trained yourself in, in a very small sense to get the hang of writing it mm -hmm. then the next thing you have to do is thinking about how am I going to get people to want to read it and you right. do that by setting up a website or a blog preferably a blog because that's the easiest a WordPress blog um, where you might just simply post what you've put in your newsletter as blog posts mm -hmm. um, and you'll have a sign up form on it or some sort of what we call a squeeze page, which is where a, perhaps the front page of the blog only really has an option, one option, and that's for people to sign up for your newsletter. Yeah. Um, well, they get like a free gift or something. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And you might go out onto the internet and find um, th 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 there's a, a, a thing called um, private label, which is where you can get hold of a book that there is no copyright on and you can then rewrite that book in your own words and call it your own. You can usually buy a private label book for five or ten dollars from some mm. sites. There's a site called PLR Store, I think. Yes, that's right. Um, and um, they're not very good usually, but when you rewrite them, you can make them good. You wouldn't use them as they come mm. because they're a bit rough and ready. But you can, you can create a special report or something that you put on your site Sign up to my newsletter today and you'll get this unique special report. Yeah, I, I, I a made a gift. video course and that's, yeah. um, made that a, a, a free gift when I first started. Can be, yeah. can be anything. It doesn't have to be a book. It could be a series of emails people mm -hmm. will sign up to receive. If, you, if there's something that you want to teach, um, if there's something you know about, uh, you might write seven short emails that cover it as a, like a little mini course yes, and you say yes. to people well, I'm going to teach you this over seven lessons. Whatever it is, it's an ethical bribe that, that gets people to say yes here's my email address and first name, that's all you want. Um, and it's the build a better mousetrap thing, you know, they will come mm -hmm. um, slowly. You, you'll only get a few subscribers trickling in. But then there are lots and lots and lots of other things that you can do. You can um, do ad swaps with people, you can buy subscribers from from uh, lots of sources where you can buy subscribers. Um, so, so, okay, so you, you, you've narrowed down your niche, it's something you're comfortable writing about, you've created a blog that has an opt-in, where you've pasted some of your newsletters up, yeah. and we're starting to get maybe two or three sign-ups a day maybe, um, we've maybe promoted that blog on a forum or something like that um, to get a little bit of traffic. What would then be your next step? Well, the next step really is, is just to keep refining it and, and mm -hmm. keep on trying to, because there isn't much more to it than that. Um, really, all you've needed so far to buy is uh, a domain name to put your blog on and an autoresponder, um, mm -hmm. a subscription to an autoresponder. Uh, the one I use is $17 a month. Yeah. Um, so your, your total outlay from month one is probably $27. You know, it's, it's a very small outlay for, a, for what is mm. going to develop into a very real business. Um, but then once you start getting subscribers, and of course 
you can then ask your existing subscribers to get you more um, because if they're if they're enjoying what they're writing they're likely to become evangelists for you as well and you can ask mm. them to tell their friends about you but gradually it will build and you I mean when I first started my my first newsletter I had no subscribers at all um, I, I sent it to myself just to see see what would happen <laughs> yes. um, and then somebody signed up and I think that person still still reads my newsletter really? actually wow. 10 11 years on um, but the ball starts to roll and it, 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 it's almost a magical process really that you, you one minute you have no subscribers and the next minute you've got a hundred or two hundred and then it, it gathers its own momentum. So how many subscribers would you say you need um, you know for this kind of secret thing of you know this, this, this I would say you know replacing your day job to have an income from it? Um, well it depends on how you write really um, yeah. if, if you write in the way that I'm suggesting, which has been proven to me to be one of the most responsive ways of writing, um, then you need probably a lot fewer subscribers than somebody who's got an email list of 250,000 and just sends out ads every day and has very, very low response because people aren't interested in opening their emails. That's true, um, yeah, because you've got a thousand people on your list and you send an email out, you're not going to get a thousand people e reading your email, are you? No, no, you'll no. probably be lucky to get 10% opening any one issue. And why is that? Um, just because people don't have the time or they don't get around to it or it doesn't get delivered to them. Um, spam because e folder or Yeah, because yeah. e email can be a bit unreliable. Yeah. Or they're not so interested in what you've got to say that they want to read every issue but they're happy to dip in and dip out every now and again or you know I get people writing to me sometimes weeks after I've sent a newsletter out mm -hmm. commenting on it because they've only just got around to reading it because they stack them up until there's half a dozen and then they'll read I, them all I've, in one go. Yeah I, I found that as well I've looked at my stats and then yeah. you know, people still opening my emails or I make yeah. a sale from something I promoted two weeks ago and I'm thinking mm. that people must just leave them in their inbox yeah. and then go through them when they've got time or something. Yeah. Yeah. But what's important is not how many subscribers you have, but how much money you make, really. Right. <laughs> and the, the industry standard says, on average, um, an email list should make roughly $1 per subscriber per month. Mm -hmm. So if you have 1,000 subscribers on your list, you should be making about $1,000 a month from it. Yeah. Um, in my experience, um, there are a lot of people who are making a lot less than that. Um, but equally, I know I'm making a lot more than that because I have a very small list. That's I've, right, you do, don't you? I've only got about 5,000 on wow, my list really? and, I've, and I've never really bothered to try and grow it much more than that because I, I get to know my subscribers. You know, they, they become friends. You, know, mm -hmm. and it's, it, you don't want it to be, well, I don't want it to no, be too big. No, faceless, yeah. For mine. Um, but I make a, a, an extremely good income from that small list. And a friend of mine um, in India, he had a list of 6,000 people. Um, and he pruned the list down to 600 and made a very good income from a list of just 600 people. Really? But those 600 people all opened his newsletter and all bought the things yeah. that he promoted because he had such a good connection with them. I hear Chris Farrell did that last year, yeah. uh, you know, a very big time internet marketer. Yeah. He had something like 25, 30,000 people on his list and he deleted all the people that hadn't opened his emails for six months yeah. and he ended up with something like 5,000 people on his yeah. list. But those 5,000 people were the people that he was interested in promoting to yes. the other people who opened his emails. Yeah. Yeah. And if you, if you make a point of telling those people that you've kept on your list what you've done, that, oh, I've recently pruned my list and you're still receiving it because you're one of my you know, <laughs> yeah. best customers, they actually then tend to become more responsive mm. because, because they almost feel privileged to continue to receive it in a way. Um, so it's not about <laughs> the, the absolute numbers of people that you've got. It's about how responsive you can make the ones that you've got. Right, right. So you don't need to worry about creating a massive, massive list. And do you sell in every email or do you just no. sell once a week no. or once a month? I mean, I, how does that work? There's no formula. Yeah. I sell when I've got something good to sell. Right. Um, or recommend. I but don't, if you don't have anything good to recommend for a month, you, you obviously then wouldn't make any money, would you? So no, I don't. No. No. But it's 
um, but one month you might make enough for two, for two months worth yeah. of wages or yeah the yeah. first the first thing you have to learn when you become self-employed is that it, there's no longer a regular paycheck and that doesn't matter because you might you might have a month where you make no money at all but the next month you might make five times as much as you ever made when you were employed yeah, I you found know? That as well, um, yeah. and it's and it's very up and down and you've got to learn to be able to ride that um, but it doesn't matter to me that uh, I can have a month or even two months without trying to sell anything in my newsletter because I know that my readers will appreciate what I do recommend when I do recommend it even more right, um, because right. they know that I haven't been just trying to flog them everything under the sun. Wow. Um, and and that way, you know, you can then find, you can send a newsletter out and half an hour later you've made 10 grand or something and it's, right, yeah. you know, it's, it's easy, it happens that way. Mm, um, interesting. Now, um, as I said, you know, I bought this course from Martin originally. That's how I learned um, how to build my list and how to interact with my list. Um, now, Martin's actually um, doesn't sell this particular product anymore. But what he's recently done is he's re-released this product, but he's put it into an ebook and into a, a, a new product called um, was it P uh, Easy it's, in it's Academy? It's called Easy in Academy yes. with a hyphen in between the two. Easy in Academy. <laughs> Dot com. So, Tell us a little bit about. Um, tell me a little bit about your, your new product, then. Because um, when I when I bought the product, it was a video training course, yeah. and it was. Um, but now it, you, you've re, you've you've added to it massively, apparently. Yes. Yeah. Well, the the yeah. video the video course was uh, three three hour, mm. or three one hour videos, um, and it was very popular and people liked it. And but people kept coming asking me more questions about it, and unlike you who are very comfortable with video, I'm not particularly comfortable with video, I prefer writing things. That's right, yes. um, and so I, I sort of decided that it would be nice to take that video course as, as the base of what I was doing, but really expand it so that it covered absolutely everything that I know about writing a newsletter. Um, right the way from the beginning, mm -hmm. right the way from how to start, how to write how to write basically, yeah, um, yeah. how to get subscribers, how to promote it, how, how to do it, how to monetize it. All the it. different ways of getting people to join your list, like, oh, like ad I think, swaps I think there's six, and... 16 ways I cover oh, in, in the book oh, wow. of, of how, to, how to drive traffic to your list, how to get subscribers. Sounds like I have to get a copy, there's <laughs> <laughs> some new techniques there. Um, yeah. And I'm sure there are others that I don't use, but mm. they're just the ones I know about. Um, yeah. Um, but uh, yes, I mean, I just tried to make it as exhaustive as I possibly could. It's about 250 pages or so. Wow, really? Um, and since it launched, it originally launched back in February of mm -hmm. this year, and as people bought it and, and have very few questions, actually. I mean, I, I had intended to create a website of the frequently asked questions, but there weren't enough frequently asked it's questions. It's all in the book. <laughs> yes. yeah. But the few questions that people did ask, I then revised the book to, mm -hmm. to expand where, you know, sometimes we get a little bit myopic when we write things and we assume knowledge that isn't mm -hmm. necessarily there. So I tried to cover all of that. And I think what I've got now is, is, a, is, is the definitive how to create your own newsletter that makes money product. Right. And, yeah. and going back to what you were saying about if you were sitting in a job wondering how to get started in internet marketing but you know the problem when you're in a job is that you don't have a lot of time that's right yes the beauty of writing a newsletter is that you can literally make a full-time income on about two hours a week because that's all the time it takes to write a newsletter my newsletter now uh, takes me about an hour maybe two hours if I'm feeling slow and want to have lots of cup, cups of coffee for each issue. So a maximum of four hours each week. Actually, I remember recently, Martin, I read, actually Martin's newsletter is one of the few internet marketing emails I always open religiously. And um, you, you were on holiday recently, weren't you? When you got your iPad, I think yeah. it was. See, I know these things about Martin. I read his <laughs> newsletter. And he was talking about how um, he just got this iPad and he was going to write his newsletter on the iPad. And he was tr going from place to place trying to find a Wi-Fi connection. And you ended up in a coffee shop or something, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> ended up in a coffee shop and um, he wrote his newsletter on the iPad, which is... I did. So all you need is a laptop, an iPad. A Wi-Fi yeah. connection, if you can find one. <laughs> I have you can actually do your written. Yeah. I have actually written it on my iPhone. Really? In you Starbucks. Wow, you must once. have been. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have done it. It's not easy, but yeah. and it takes a bit longer. But and I'm yeah, not very yeah, good yeah. at that. But um, but with the iPad, it was easy, and with a laptop, it's dead easy. And 
And yes, it's, it's, it's something that anyone who's employed can start um, as, a, as a supplement to your income. Because I'm not going to pretend that you're going to start writing a newsletter and next week you're going to be making a living from it. No. It isn't going to it's happen. It's something you need to build up. It, I, you know, the biggest, biggest question I do get from people who buy my book is, how long will it take? And the answer is, uh, the honest answer is, I don't know. But the, the, the reality is it, it will take you a minimum of three months to get established. I think it also depends, not just with newsletters, but anything. People often ask me, you know, how, how long will it take to replace my job? Well, it really depends on, A, how, I would say, you know, um, how passionate you are about it and how much time you can invest. Mm. And if you can't invest the time, how much money you can spend. Because yeah. you can either pay people to do things like build websites for you, create squeeze pages, or you can spend the time doing it yourself. Yeah. Um, so if, if, you know, if you're sitting there 10 hours a day working on it, obviously you're going to do this much quicker. If you're only doing an hour a week, it's going to take longer. Um, but with well, a newsletter, once it's all set up and you've got everything in place, yes. you, you literally can only work, you know, you can do this, sort of, like you're saying, two hours a week. Yeah. And the interesting thing about, I, I think, about newsletters is people are always going on about the, you know, the internet lifestyle, the laptop lifestyle, you know, on a beach and I'm just you know, doing my thing and the sales are coming in, when in reality, a lot of internet marketing, you know, building mini sites, building review sites, um, all these different things you can do. Um, yes, you can make a full-time income doing it, but you know, you need to be there with your computer, with a mouse, and it's very, very time-consuming. You know, you couldn't do it sitting on a beach. You'd need to be in a proper office and a proper environment. Well, I do anyway to to, to build websites like yeah. that. But a newsletter, you literally can do it anywhere. I mean, like you're saying, you've done it on your iPhone. Yeah. Um, I've done it from a hospital. Um, you know, so you know that really I hope is. I don't have to emulate that. One. No, but, but you know, it, it's, it's just the point of you know that really is the laptop lifestyle, isn't it? Yes. If you if you really want that kind of freedom yeah. um, to be able to just That's... pick up your laptop or your iPhone or your iPad, take off, go on holiday, um, you can literally work from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. That's what the internet lifestyle is. It's it's yeah. not about sitting on beaches and and sipping margaritas no. it's it's about having the freedom to do what you want to do when you want to do it and you shouldn't be just making a new job for yourself i think a lot of people with no. internet marketing no. they think oh yeah i'm going to do this internet marketing thing and i have all this spare time and i've seen it before some people you know that yes they make a full-time income but they're stuck in their office 10 hours a day 15 hours a day creating products and doing things mm. and they go, oh this is great isn't it when actually they're doing more work than they used to do when they were had yeah. a full-time job yeah uh, that... but I think when, when you become an internet marketer you become a little obsessed oh. um, and so all of us even even though I make my main living from my newsletter I as we said right at the beginning I do lots of other things online mm. but I do that because I love it because I love internet marketing and I'm sure you do exactly the same. I'm sure there's a lot of things oh, that you spend it. your time doing. You've got absolutely no financial need to do, yes. but you enjoy doing it. Yeah, like AdSense. Yeah. I still love AdSense. Yeah. It, it's a, a hard way to make money, I'll be completely honest, um, but I find it really rewarding building a site once and then the money keeps coming in, mm. but it's, I could probably make more money doing other things, but I just enjoy doing it. Yeah, you know. and I, I write... Um, scripts, you know, computer programs, yeah. not because I need to, because I could very easily pay someone else to do it, but because I love doing it. Yeah, and, you could get an outsource to do and, that, couldn't you? And, yeah. then, and then I can sell them, I mean I have a new site at the moment that I've just launched which, That's right, yes. which um, finds products for people to sell on Amazon, finds the, the good products that, that they can sell. And you wrote that yourself, didn't you, a script? I wrote the that. script that finds those those products, yes. Um, but I could have outsourced that, but I chose not to because it's my choice. I have well, the freedom to do like that. You like doing it, yeah. yes. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that because that's a really interesting product because um, with Amazon mar marketing, the big problem I've always faced when selling things um, as an Amazon affiliate is you, know, you, you promote a book or you promote something and you get paid like 32 cents commission and you think, God, is it really worth it? Yeah. And um, I mean, I've got Amazon sites out there, you know, we all have. Mm. And um, the commission level is just so, I could never live off it. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to find those high paying niches. Um, but you, you say you, you've written, I actually haven't looked at this yet, and I'm gonna look at it next week, <laughs> but um, so I'm dead interested in this. But Martin's actually developed, um, he's actually developed a, a software script which scrapes Amazon for the top, is it the, the top paying affiliate yeah, programs, what, what, the, the top products or the most what expensive was, I, products? I, I, um, I make Amazon sites. Yeah. Um, again, I can't make a living from it, but I make hmm. good money from Amazon sites. Um, 
But when you look at all the products that teach you how to sell on Amazon, how to be an Amazon affiliate, they all tell you that the, the, the key to it is finding the right products. And they all have a very similar way of, of, of deciding what the good products are. You need to have um, a high ticket price mm -hmm. because with the very small commissions that Amazon pays, there's no point selling something for $10. Um, it might be easy to sell, but Is it's it far three, better. Three percent or four percent. Four percent when you yeah. start, yeah, and it yeah, can so. rise up to about nine or so. But um, mm -hmm. you have to sell an awful lot to get up to nine percent commission. Four, four to seven percent is what most people are on, um, which seems very small, but um, it's very often just as easy to sell someone a product that's $150 as, as it is $15. Absolutely. Um, yes. So, and you're going to make ten times the commission on yeah. it. Um, so the first thing you need to do is find products that, that are worth a lot of money. And that's easy to do with Amazon. Amazon have a built-in mm. filter to do that. But then you need to have uh, a good number of reviews written for the product. And Amazon don't let you filter on how many reviews a product's been given. Yeah, I've quite um, often bought customer it, reviews. Quite often I've, my deciding factor on buying something from Amazon, if I'm buying a book or something, especially a technical book, is how many, you know, does it have positive reviews? Does it yeah. have a good star rating? Yeah. And that's quite often the deciding factor on whether I buy a product or yeah. not. Uh, but the reviews yeah. are important because when you're building websites to promote Amazon products, you'll want to use what the people in the reviews have said. Absolutely. You don't yes. want to copy it word for word, but mm. you'll, you'll want to get a feel for the product through those reviews. So you need at least 10 decent reviews there. Uh, and that's difficult to find from Amazon. You then also need to know um, the star rating, so the, how positive those reviews yeah. were. And Amazon will let you sort on whether something's got four or more stars out of five. But four stars is still a little bit on the edge. Um, what we really want is to know 4.5 stars or more. But Amazon don't give you a way of finding out 4.5 stars. <laughs> but they have um, a rating for it, but they don't allow it's you to. It's there, yeah. but it's not accessible. Mm. Um, and various other factors. So, but rolling all these things together, that's what you need to, to uh, this is a formula that you need to apply to all the products. Now the problem is Amazon have got millions of products mm. across dozens of departments and just trying to find the products that match those criteria in one of their departments like um, you know, Hi-Fi or whatever mm. the department is, electrical goods, um, that can take you hours. Yes. So I realised that you could do it much quicker by software uh, and so I created a program that once a week goes into Amazon, goes into every department and finds wow. every product in every department um, that matches all of, that, all of those criteria, produces a report and it, you know, considering the millions of products they sell, the report actually has about 300 or so products on it each month. That's interesting. So it's the right. creme de la creme of the products on, on are Amazon. They, are they all in completely different niches or do you find like sometimes there's like four hi-fi products or, or four electrical products, four products in the book section and yeah. things like that? Yeah, yeah. You, so you, they, could, yeah, you could build you a get, site around get, that, oh yes, that, that niche several. or something. Yeah. 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 Um, and so each once a week my, my members get that that report mm -hmm. um, and then having done that I realized that I could create a different report which is also useful because that's great for the finding the products that are worth a lot of money to you mm -hmm. but you also want to have products to sell that will get your your overall commission level up and as I said you get a higher commission level from Amazon by selling more products so it's not just the price of the product it's no, the amount no. of products so if you right. can sell a hundred products for ten dollars oh, you're yeah. not going to make any money from it but that'll mean you'll earn more money from ah. the bigger commission products yeah. from yeah. the bigger price products yeah um, so I, I created another report that goes into Amazon and finds products it also has high star ratings high reviews but that are currently on sale for at least 80% discount. Oh, right. Now that's, that's again, that's something that's, that you yeah. can't automatically find directly from Amazon. And that usually has about five or 600 products each week. And those and would sell really well, wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, there's some, you get some very strange things, you know, like a mm. pack of washers or something that you, <laughs> wouldn't, you wouldn't want to sell. But you also get some amazing products on there. Um, <laughs> the, the, the strangest one of all was an, um, 
an Israeli army gas mask, <laughs> which was on sale but for 81% actually... discount. But people were actually, I mean, this wasn't some obscure thing that not someone would never type into Google. I mean, these were things that people were actually These are products that are on sale on and, and Amazon. And are selling. Yeah, because, yeah. because one of the factors that I my, my script takes mm -hmm. into account is the popularity of ah. the product. So these are all... So that's a bit like gravity and clickbank then, it's, it's a sort of similar thing yeah. of like so, how, how, so these how are many all they're selling. These yeah. are all within the top one or two hundred selling products of their category. Right, so, right. Um, so yeah, so you, wow. So that's the second report you get each week. I'm going to have to get a copy of this. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds fascinating, yeah. And it, that works for Amazon.com, the American one, and I'm currently writing a script that will work for Amazon.co.uk as well. Right, okay. But it just makes life very much easier for Amazon affiliates. Absolutely. And being an Amazon affiliate, you know, with, if you have that correct information, that can be the make or break of you know, either not making any money or making very little money um, oh, yeah. and making a lot of money. Because most people I speak to who, do, who are Amazon affiliates, myself included, <laughs> make virtually no money from Amazon. Yeah, yeah I mean, I make a, a little bit of money from Amazon, but not very much. I mean, I was speaking to someone uh, last week at the London lunch and he was saying, he only makes about a dollar or two per month and it's not even enough to be paid by Amazon because it doesn't, it's not hit the threshold yet. Mm. And that's because we're all promoting the wrong products. We need to be promoting these products which your, your script yeah. pulls out. Or well, we're trying um, to promote the right yeah. products but it's incredibly hard to find them. Yes. And yes. now it's not. Right, and on which websites? That's, that's Amazon that's, Goldmine, isn't no, it? No, it's amazing, I can't use the word Amazon because right. of copyright reasons, oh, right, but it's yes. amazinggoldmine.com. Amazing Goldmine. I'll put a link to it below the video. And I'll also put a link to uh, Martin's uh, newsletter course as well, below the video as well. Right, well, thank you very much, Martin. It's been absolutely fascinating. You're very welcome. And um, if you have any questions for me or for Martin, um, post them um, as a comment uh, below the video. And uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.